For this next piece of wood, I can't lower the piece of wood directly down below me. So what I'm going to do is rig the piece off, lower it over and catch it in the lowering line, and then we're going to attach it on to a speed line and let it run down the speed line over our obstacles. This yellow line here is going to act as my speed line. But for now, it's going to be hanging slack out of the way. But I've cinched it off on the tree just above my rigging. Stand clear, making the cut. All right, now the piece is fully rigged off. The back cut has been cut, and all I need to do is push the piece over. What I'm going to do is allow the lowering line to catch the brunt, the impact of this piece of wood, and then we'll clip it on to the speed line, this yellow line, which is slack at this point. Again, we don't want to tension up a speed line and dump heavy wood into it. Okay, all set on the lowering line, Norm? Okay. Stand clear. Notice we've taken a smaller piece because we're not letting it run to decelerate. If we did, then we might have to raise it back up to rig it to the speed line. Now I've attached this rigging block over the speed line and then attached it to the piece of wood via the lowering line using a three wrap six coil prusik and a steel carabiner which I've locked down. This prusik is very nice because it's multi-directional. Notice I can slide it up and down and then it cinch off. And then we'll be able to take up the tension on the speed line and lower it down by using the lowering line. In certain situations, this technique can be very useful. Although it can take a little bit of extra time to set it up, it can be a very useful technique when necessary. All right, Norm, tension up the speed line. Norm's using a ratcheting lowering device to take tension up on the speed line. All right, Norm, that looks good. You got a good amount of tension on the speed line. Okay, Ken, we can uh, release the lowering line and send it down. <laughs>